<clears throat> oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 592 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined by the two industry leaders, Stephen Kyle Bracky, Ben Funky Askren. What's going on? Well, good morning, fellas. Happy Wednesday to you. I'm uh, having a pretty good day today. Woke up. We got lots of snow for the first time in Wisconsin. So you got no. Uh, it's it's after Christmas. We got a white Christmas, kind of. That's great. Um, what's what's the kids' favorite snow activities? Uh, I'm thinking they're gonna sled while I'm on the podcast. Oh, great! That nice big yeah, that's big hill in the front yard. They actually for Christmas they got one of those big big old inner tubes with um got like the uh, uh, cloth covering type thing not cloth i don't know should go fast nylon kind of thing nylon thank you that's what i was looking for yes sir that's great happy mm-hmm. wh- happy white almost christmas white new year's maybe it's white almost new year's there we go it's almost new year's it's hard to hard to believe almost. i don't know if this i don't know if this year has gone by fast or slow ben it doesn't seem like it was that slow. it was slow. slow i guess it was slow but i at the same time i can't believe it's almost you know, January 1st, 2021. Yeah. Um, you know, we have Midlands Files tonight, actually. Midlands Files are tonight. That's oh, huge. Are we, about, are we talking about those? Yeah, Scuffle Precies just dropped. It's uh, going to be some some pretty juicy quarters. It's sad that we are not yeah. talking about those things, but you know what? It, we, this year has been about learning to be uh, thankful. Resourceful. Um, resourceful. Awesome. Resourceful. Hey, but also, Nate Jackson, wants, big he wants to wrestle you. Nate Jackson. I don't want. To, I, I have no desire to wrestle Nate Jackson. So you you said um, in in your I comeback. Mean, hey, listen, he should he should have listened to me. Well, I definitely can't wrestle on January 9th. That's I barely. That's, that's pre- completely out of the question. Preposterous. That's preposterous. Um, but I don't know. Maybe he considered himself a bum because I said I want some bums first. This guy was in the finals of the U.S. Open, eighty six kilograms. <laughs> Not exactly bum material. No. Uh, no, I don't think yeah. I, not a bum. I think that would be a, a very tough first match back for you, Ben. So yeah. I would advise so, you against I'm, it. I'm, I'm out on that and I'm out. Of, I can't I definitely get January 9th. I will be there in um, Austin, Texas. I'm looking forward to it though. This is going to be awesome. So yeah, we're looking to add matches to that. So get at us. Many of you already have. I heard, I heard, I heard about one you might add. Oh yeah. I bet you did. Maybe we'll yeah. see. Maybe. Be cool. Okay. Like yeah, I'll guy. be there so I can help coach him. Obviously. Yes. All right, we're talking about Tristan Moran. We'll just say that. <laughs> so not to be. Oh, okay. Just, I didn't know if it was a secret or not. I, just, I mean, it's. I mean, it's fine. Um, hopefully, okay. hopefully, it'd be cool to have him on. I like Tristan a lot. Big Ten. The Big Ten schedule has been released for wait, vo- wait, where? for volleyball. For volleyball. Oh, you're a you're a chickass. It's in the it's in the dock. I didn't think I'd get you. I didn't, I didn't even open the dock yet. Oh wow, <laughs> Ben's locked in on on Wednesday. I like so, yeah. Shoot. Shoot from the hip sometimes. That's okay. Uh, no, it's good. But, yeah, still no wrestling schedule. I was really hoping. I don't know why. They'll probably drop it as soon as the show ends so we don't get to talk about it because we're not doing a show tomorrow. Um, which, you know, whatever. Maybe we'll do we'll do something. But hopefully it comes out this week. But, yeah, still, still nothing. I think I mentioned yesterday on the show, but I'll reiterate in case I didn't, that the teams know, like, when they're wrestling and how many matches. They just don't know. Who or where, which, yeah. you know, details, details. That's so I strange. <laughs> it's very strange. That's so strange. What do you think they're possibly, I mean, okay, so if they have the locations and they have the amount of people that will be there, why can't they just feed teams into there? What, what could they possibly be waiting on at this point? I don't know. I can't imagine the coaches have any involvement in terms of, no, we don't want to wrestle them. I mean, I'm sure it's completely out of their hands. This should be no. the easiest schedule they've ever made, right? For sure. It should be so Because there's no other tournaments or anything else that's messing it up. There's no obstacles. There's nothing to navigate other than nothing. their own, you know, lack of ambition, I guess, to make to make schedules. But, you know, they're they're gonna happen. They're gonna get put out there at some point. But very a very yeah. strange thing. Very strange. That is they, don't, very strange. they owe us no explanations. But D one wrestling is starting shoot in two days. It's Wednesday. On Friday, we're gonna have D one wrestling. Kyle Brackey, he wrote something about every single match that's going to happen. Um, what a hero. Steve, talk a little bit about, about uh, what's going to be happening 
this weekend? Give us give us some uh, nuggets. Yeah, so it, it's not a huge weekend of wrestling. So I was just kind of looking down through it. I was like, I can do a little bit of tidbits for every duel. And, you know, the first one that kicks us off, Campbell, North Carolina, is actually a pretty good duel. You have three ring matchups. Josh Hiles, Zach Sherman, Austin Crazer, Clay Lau, Andrew Morgan, Devin Kane. Um, and then going into Saturday, you get a little action with Ohio and Buffalo. And then <laughs> one thing that you're going to see some teams do this year, uh, I was talking to CP about this before the show, and it's what App State is doing, is uh, they're having three other teams come to Boone, but it's not a quad. It's not a dual style. It's going to be individual pools. And it's just to get guys more matches. Uh, Coach Bentley told me that it's not like an advancement tournament. Um, think like so. There's gonna be pools. there's gonna be no there's gonna be no duels at all, or they'll, they'll do duels and the round robin thingy. No, no duels at all. Just the just the pool okay. play. Um, each team's gonna enter like twenty wrestlers. So I'd imagine maybe there's like five guys in each pool and you might have like pool like kind of like their journeyman has like the abc pools for like the starters yeah. and you know second string guys and and backup so just to get your guys a lot more matches i know bucknell's doing it later in the weekend um with vmi and long island um they're kind of doing the same kind of thing so that's going to be an interesting thing to watch this year uh, i think a lot of teams yeah. are going to do that um arizona state kicks off their season against little rock uh little rock second season uh they're just gonna keep getting better and better coach arizona's doing a good job recruiting uh there will be wrestling in chattanooga on january 2nd it will not be the southern scuffle yeah, it no, will be chattanooga i thought they're having a quad chattanooga i thought they're having a quad chattanooga they're not uh it's just, it's just it's just a manual on the their schedule page they are Schedule page. They are going okay. to Oklahoma State the next weekend for a quad, so maybe that's what you were oh, okay. thinking of. Um, okay. Hofstra and Lehigh. Uh, Lehigh, man, their line's going to look a lot different this year with no Nick Farrow, Josh Humphrey, Jordan Cutler, Chris Weiler, Jordan Wood. Um, so big difference there for, for Lehigh. So you get a look at the new look Mountain Hawks. And then Campbell just wanted to have the toughest schedule of the year, apparently, because the day after wrestling North Carolina, <laughs> they're going to. Re- they're going to Virginia Tech um, and, and matches to watch there. Corbin Mink, uh, be a nice little test for Sam Latona. Uh, and Andrew Morgan, Hunter Bullen, our, our first top 10 matchup of the year. Ooh. Um, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. And then, but the event that everyone uh, needs to have their eyes on and could be a lot of fun, or is going to be a lot of fun, it's going to be live on Floor Wrestling. It's that North Dakota State quad because. There are potential 17 ranked matchups. Um, if you, you look down through that article, you got Matt Schmidt, Devin Turner, uh, Matt Schmidt transferring over from West Virginia, Missouri native, Grant Willits, Alan Hart. Um, and then what's interesting for Missouri is, is it going to be a JQs or is it going to be a Ben's boy, Keegan O'Toole? Come on, um, give us give us something. I, I honestly, I don't even bug Coach Smith about it. I genuinely do not know. I, I told you at WrestleOff, Keegan had his molars out. He wasn't. Uh, he did not wrestle WrestleOff. Okay. Well, you don't have to ask Coach Smith. You know, you could. Could he be back in time for this, or is he still on the mend from? That? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was like uh, well, WrestleOff was like December twenty one or twenty two. Oh. He has molars out like December sixteen or seventeen, something like that. So he'll be back. Okay. Yes. Okay. Man, I want to see it, it. It's crazy. I do too. It's crazy because I mean, Jake Hughes is is thirteenth, but it feels like Keegan could be top five. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we we think for sure fifty seven for him. He's not a sixty five. No, definitely not fifty seven for sure. And then, uh, but that's I I did not realize I knew Frantic was there, and I guess I didn't think about Kate DeVos and Hunter Wilts. But there's that's three really good matchups. They should do. Um, uh, the pool type gimmick where uh, and JQ and O'Toole can wrestle in it, and we get so many good matchups. That would be good. <laughs> and it'll would. Be, that'd be like the easiest wrestle off solution ever. You literally just all compete against the same guys, and yeah. Uh, and since there's no tournaments, but man, it's it's uh, do it somewhere. Man, it'll be tough. O'Toole would. I mean, you would think if he's doing that great in the room. But it's it's just tough to take a guy out like JQ's right away. I, I don't know if it'll be a yeah. split time situation. But the thing is, you can't like slow play it 
this year like you could because your guys you need you need guys getting matches. So kind of tough, but also with for Coach Smith, it's like listen, it's a free year. It doesn't count. You don't have to feel like you're benching a dude for in in cost him a year of eligibility. It doesn't count if you're the best guy wrestle. Um, yeah, that's why I think we'll see Keegan O'Toole because I think he's too legit. Absolutely. That's a great song by maybe, <laughs> maybe they I, I, maybe they both wrestle matches. This this is your your good old fashioned uh, quad. The only two teams not wrestling are SDSU and NDSU, which I'm assuming they will later in the yeah. season. Um, yeah, and, and then is it is it uh, hold on is it advisable? Uh, it's not advisable. Is it allowable? By the NCA safety team, I don't. It was so in Wisconsin. The, one of the regulations, which is coming off this week, they could only do one duel per week, but they could wrestle as many matches in the duel that week. So I, I just saw Luke Paul tonight. There's a match going on, and the two teams are doing a duel, but they're wrestling like 60 total matches because they just set up all these exhibitions. And it might be my starter at 132 versus your starter at 126 or whatever, right? Can they do exhibition matches in these duels too, or could, does the NCA not allow that? It is allowed. It is allowed. I think you're going to. Yeah, I think you're going to see that. I don't. I don't know if you'll see it at something like this where there's already three teams there and you're running on a pretty tight yeah. schedule, probably. But when it's just like, like I think the Big Ten, like if you're just wrestling conference only, I bet you see another mat, like maybe in the corner or something like that. Or I, I don't you know start, why. You, maybe I don't know why you wouldn't. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. No, it, de yeah. it definitely sounds right. like that. The plan is for teams to have extra exhibition matches for non-starters, et cetera, and just you know get guys maybe get freshman matches. So I think we'll see it, which is you know great. Yeah. Even if you just had them in the wrestling room, I mean, you literally just have to hire a couple of referees and say, okay, all the you know what's your fifty sevens, what's our fifty sevens, put them all on a list and wrestle them off, and then you do the one duel when you're supposed to do the duel. Yeah. I think I think we will see some of that this year, which is which is good. And it's, yeah, it's easy to do. So let's mm -hmm. let's get as much wrestling as we can out of this. I'm excited to watch Oregon State. I'm not gonna lie. I want to see what the new new Beavers look like with the you know Pendleton, Imar, uh, Nate Engel. I'm excited to see how they mm -hmm. look. Obviously, sometimes teams can look different right away. Um, you don't know, and yeah, I'm, I'm curious and. Obviously, they'll be judged by their their late in season, and and you know Pendleton's going to probably need some time to get it back going. But they have a yes. they have a you solid do. nucleus of, of lightweights. Yeah, it, it usually takes like a year or two, though, or sorry, two or three years to get it really going as a brand new coach. Yeah, especially when it's like a, a pat pop type of situation where you basically have to get all the other guys yeah. out of the room. Did he, did he do that? They're they have lost a lot. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah, Pat Pop, Pat Pop got rid of like everyone but like eight. To, no, Something all but like Tommy that. Gant. Everyone but Tommy Gant like made it. Like what? some people, it wasn't. Yeah, like throughout his like the transition, only like Tommy Gant made it from like his class or whatever. Beyond basically everyone else was, was wow. gone. Yeah, I think wow. either either Tommy or, or Pat. Till uh, I think I did an interview with them about this years ago when I was at NC State. Wow, that's coverage. wild. Yeah. Like he was like the only one that kind of made the the Pat Pop transition. Hmm. Just totally crazy. It is totally crazy. Yeah, so that, speaking of the the new new coach, uh there's like I think there's four this weekend that are making their debut. Scotty Sentez at Campbell, um Ryan LeBlanc at the Citadel. They actually had a couple duels already, but they were against like NAI teams. It'll be his first D one action. Uh Chris Pendleton and then uh Kerry Cole at, at um uh, his new his new mm. stomping grounds Annapolis. Hey um Hey I heard a rumor. Can I yeah, ask you guys about this rumor or not? So I heard this relatively recently, but someone said they they had someone from Navy was I don't know if it was home, I think it was for Christmas maybe, but they had told they were out of the, the kid was out of shape and the person said well, why the heck are you out of shape and they said well we've only been able to lift weights and that's it no wrestling so i have no idea whether that's true or not about navy but if it was that would be freaking crazy i 
I don't think that's true. I don't know though. I mean, I I can't. How would they do a wrestling match against Pitt if all they've been doing is, you know, ripping out bicep curls? It doesn't even make. I mean, well, what? I'm sure you do a few more creative things than bicep curls. But listen, I mean, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. You're a military man, Christian. Yeah, there, I am certain. <laughs> That, that makes no, maybe all that person was allowed to do was lift weights, but there's no way they're not able to practice practice. I mean, it, did, it didn't make much sense to me, but I, I just took the, I took the guy at what he was saying. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any reason to, to tell the thing he was lying or anything. Yeah, I don't either. Um, that's interesting. In, uh, in Ben's defense, uh, in, in, in football, they opened the season on uh, Labor Day night, and it was a pretty anticipated game against BYU. And it was one of the worst beatings I've ever seen. And Navy's coach admitted at halftime that uh, throughout training camp, they did not do any contact drills because he was scared mm. for them to touch. And is it there, showed. Is and Maryland that, that super wasn't restricted? Any, that, I don't know. That wasn't even like anything the school was saying. That was just like him being like, I don't know. I just don't want this to run rampant through my team. And it completely backfired and they got embarrassed on you know, in prime time. Yeah, I don't uh, see Kerry yeah, yeah, yeah. Colat fit it, uh, fitting that level of caution. No, Someone says either. they post snips of their practice on Facebook, so maybe this person was telling me a, a fib. Yeah, maybe he's just – yeah, I don't know. Doesn't he know the internet exists? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not buying that. Uh, yeah, I'm ex- – I mean, Pitt, Pitt versus Navy, is that – It's a good know. duel. Um, it's a really good you duel. look at – it's four top 25 matchups. You have Mickey Phillippe against Casey Kopp, Cole Matthews, Cody Tribus, Jake Wenzel, Tanner Schedule in a top 10 matchup, and Nino Bonacorsi making his debut up in 97 against number 24, Jacob Kozer. I think that might be uh, well, maybe Campbell, Virginia Tech. Campbell, Virginia Tech, or Pitt Navy are probably the two duels I'm looking the most forward to. That whole quad in general is probably going to be the most yeah. entertaining event. But if I just had to like highlight one duel where I'm just most interested – Really want to see what Navy looks like right now. Yeah, that that'll be good. Yeah, I'm looking at their Facebook right now. They're practicing. They're, I mean, they're posting pictures. What the heck? The room wrestling. Now, I'm doing a dummy. Yeah. Someone's telling me lies, and I repeated them. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you, you got check. straight up lied. Yeah, you have to. You have to check this dude, man. Jeez, it's embarrassing. It's okay for him, not you. <laughs> all you all you can do is bo- take people at their word. You know. Yeah. All right, keep keep going. This is good, Bracky. What else is uh, is happening? So then, um, one that I found out just right before the show that we will have live is uh, Cal Poly's hosting a traditional try against uh, Utah Valley in Fresno State. Um, only one Ooh. ranked matchup throughout throughout those duels. Uh, Bernie Truax, I believe is how you say it. He just won U twenty threes. He'd be taking on Demetrius Romero who missed last season due to injury. I think he only wrestled two matches, so that would be a good test for him. And nice to see Demetrius Romero back out there. Also, Taylor Lamont back down at 125. Um, Cal Poly has an interesting lineup. You know, they, they pick up Lawrence Sains and Adam Kim from Fresno State, who were starters there. And then um, Legend Lamer actually had a win over Jay Nabis last year during his redshirt year. Um, nice. So it'd be really interesting to see him in the lineup. So that that's a fun little lineup for Cal Poly. Um, and Fresno State, I feel freaking awful for them. They already lost like four so, starters from last year due to transfer, and like half the other te- half the teams in the portal right now. And this is just like essentially an audition year for them in new schools. Yeah, dude. That, that what, sticks. This is their this is their last year to compete, and they have like. You know, uh, obviously, like Jackson Hemauer, who I know is now at Northern Colorado. I mean, too, they have like no one left on their team. It totally stinks. That's brutal. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, AJ Neville's could wrestle, and I mean, he's he's announced he's going to transfer San or San Diego State, South Dakota State for next year. But I think he's going to compete this final year and go ahead and graduate from Fresno. Uh, DJ Lawrence, the top four, uh, 15 guy at 141. So, you know, I hope they have a really nice season. But, man, that really stinks. Um, yeah, yeah. NC State NC State opens up on the road at Gardner-Webb. Um, they, they should roll there. But, uh, you know, the <clears throat> they're the highest, they're the highest ranked team competing this week, right? 
Yeah. Is them, in, yep. uh, them in Iowa State, I guess they have the same ranking. Yeah, sort of. Iowa State's definitely going to follow now that, yeah, Gomez is gone. Um, yeah, they, they should roll there. But your chance to see eight, eight ranked guys. Central Michigan, um, going to be taking on all of that. Uh, not a tough challenge there. But actually, just finished the MAC rankings. And when you put in the team scores, they come out a little bit ahead of Missouri. Uh, heading yeah, into the year, I saw I saw you wrote that, and I know that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> well, it also, I mean, it it uh, that's Rocky Elam ranked like thirteenth, you know, because he's a true freshman. Um, why 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 actually, would you rank um, Wyatt Coling though? Because he was a solid guy. Uh, because Coach Smith told me Rocky Elam was going to be the starter. Wow. Okay, that one's out there, huh? Got it. He didn't. I'm I'm gonna check right Bracky, now, but Bracky's more of a Missouri insider than Ben. It's it's really a yes. sad state of affairs. A, I don't grill Coach Smith about the lineup. I don't I don't want to bug him <laughs> about that. Uh, we talk about plenty of other things, but not that. So you talk so, to him, and you don't. Yeah. You're not like, hey, how's my guy Keegan doing? <laughs> uh no. I, yeah, I probably talk to um, let's say twice twice a month to be safe, something like that. And of course, yeah, of course, we talk about Keegan and Peyton and. Jacob and Ellis and, you know, all the guys that I've had relationships with. Uh, but I'm not like, who's beating who? Who got who yesterday in practice? It's more like, hey, is everyone doing good? What are they struggling with? You know, what's the lineup looking like? Uh, not harassing about my guys. Uh, what, you know, what's the schedule looking like? That kind of stuff. Got it. Yeah. So uh, he I don't want to be, that, I don't be me... like that dad that's like, my guy's starting, right? Like that would be terrible. I should never. Yeah, and you would that. never do that, but it it would be. Uh, I would never do that. Yeah, but I, th- there's somewhere between my boy starting and hey, what's up with Keegan yeah. and and uh, JQs? Yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I, I'm out. <laughs> He's so very out. when I reached out to Coach Smith, he gave me he gave me three oars in their lineup, and it was at 125 between Connor Brown, Noah Certain. Well, Connor Brown won that wrestle off. It was at 141 yep. between Josh Edmond and Alan Hart. Alan Hart won that wrestle that was, off. That was a good wrestle off, but it was over an overtime pin, Bracky. I know. I know. So yeah. that one could obviously yeah. go either way. And then the other one was at 57 between Jake Hughes and O'Toole. And he didn't say anything else about the rest of the lineup I gave him. Um, I, I, I think obviously where Missouri can really improve in those rankings is, I mean, Jake Hughes is like second right now at 157. So unless – uh, Keegan would come in and beat Telvecchia. But Sean Herman at 174, Jeremiah Kent 184. I think they're like top six or seven, but they don't have a lot of wins that Wait. can put them higher in the MAC. And then it, Rocky Elam is like I, next to last, I think. Kent is starting at 84 because Colton Hawks won the wrestle offs. Uh, no? Jeremiah Kent is why I sent him and he didn't say anything. Okay. All right. Cool. Good deal. I don't know. I mean, it, it could, I'm sure it could absolutely change. Um, but I asked him, is this going to be a starting lineup? And he, he, uh, he did not correct me there. Um, okay. So I, I mean, I definitely would, if we're going to bet money, who's going to win the Mac, I would put my money on Missouri. I would, I don't think central yeah. Michigan can hold them off, but, uh, it's interesting. Uh, and then moving on, Iowa State with a really interesting opener, uh, taking on D3 Power Wartburg since uh, 1999. They've won 13 D3 national titles, and we actually have D3 nice. rankings on our site. So uh, there's going to be five ranked matchups between D3 guys and, and D-Wall guys. So really interested to see uh, if Wartburg can put up a challenge there. And then – uh, in the Big 12, Northern Colorado and Wyoming, this will be live and flow wrestling as well. There's four ranked matchups here. Northern Colorado has seven former NCAA qualifiers in their lineup. Uh, so definitely, yeah. I would say Troy Nickerson's best, best squad. I feel really, like they've got a lot of years. transfers, haven't they? Uh, him hour is, Clother is. Um, I'm not sure anybody else is, though. Okay. They have historically um, done done well with getting getting some guys in. They had that uh, Oklahoma State guy. I forget him. He was like a 65-74 type. Keelan Torres. 
Yes, Torres. He was good. They got him. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone else, I believe. Nick Knutson, who's going to start at, at 157. But he's not a former NCAA qualifier. He transferred over from NC, uh, North Dakota State. Um, but a, a lot of good matchups here. You got uh, Dalton Robertson and Brian Andrews, a heavy. Jacob Seeley, Stephen Buchanan, 197. Clother and uh, Samuelson and Hemauer making his Northern Colorado debut against Hayden Hastings. And then uh, finally wrapping it up on Sunday night is uh, the Pitt Navy duel we talked about a little bit. Nice. Man. That's a that's a pretty solid uh, first weekend. Yes, we are back. We're back, baby. I, I can't wait. Um, it's gonna be fun. Um, you know what I was just thinking about, like the good. I, I try not to think about stuff like this, but the great duels that we won't have this year, um, like no Iowa Oklahoma State duel because there's no out of conference for Big Ten. That's like so that's, that's not happening for sure. I th- I thought Big Ten couldn't do any out of conference. No out of conference. Rule. I think I fig- I, Bracky knows all the rules. I figured uh, Tom Brands and John Smith would make it happen somehow, some way. I don't think it's. No. I think it's probably out of their hands. If, if Big Ten's not allowed to do any out of conference, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, dude, this is gonna yeah. be so hard for seating. This is gonna be so hard. It's gonna be brutal. I, yeah. yeah. Like, and you know, there's a there's a chance Iowa and Penn State don't wrestle this year. Which would be how, how many matches are they going to get within their conference? Because they're going to be multi dual weekends. Not nine, I think, uh, is what I read yesterday in that article. So nine. So the Big Ten guys are only getting nine matches prior to Big Tens. Yes. Wow. Okay. Because some of these, you know, obviously like Missouri schedule. I don't remember. I've been looking at a bunch of. There've been like a lot of quads where they're going to get. You know, it felt like maybe if I counted up, it was like twelve to fifteen matches for some of these teams before. Um, before conferences where they were doing like a quad every single weekend. Okay. Yeah. And Did you see you know, that? Yeah. I wonder why, think, just thinking about Big Ten, why wouldn't they uh, on a short Just wrestle thing, everybody. Just wrestle everybody. Then you've okay, got... You, okay, so fifth... Fi- Go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it just makes sense. You should be able to get that many matches in. Had they got their schedule out in time and started wrestling January 1st, they could have easily got every duel in and everyone wrestles everyone. Well, it, it would only take four. It would only really take four weekends. If you did quads, there's, there's 14 teams, you put four, four, three, three, and you just keep mixing them. And by the time you get to the fourth weekend, everyone will have wrestled everyone. If you move them around, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't do that. I mean, I get, I get wanting to keep the regular big 10 schedule, but that doesn't seem necessary on a year like this. Correct. Oh, like this. Not at all. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Big G's. Um, so yeah, we could you know, those big rivalry matchups, Iowa, Penn State, that's just like that's a bummer. It would happen I mean obviously they would square off at NCAs and Big Tens, but you know, yeah. You, you want that as a part of a I th- I think it should be an every year thing guaranteed. They shouldn't have to like take an out of conference thing <laughs> like uh like they have in years past where it's not on the schedule and they have to schedule it out of conference to make it happen. It's like Iowa and Penn State should just wrestle every year. It should be mandated by someone. Yeah, I agree, <laughs> I agree totally. Like Iowa, Iowa, Ohio State, Penn State, those three should always wrestle each other every year. Um, every year. That, that should be a mandate. And maybe even Minnesota's in there or Michigan. I don't know. All the good, all the best teams should always wrestle each other in conference. It's it's really not that complicated, guys. Give it the really people, isn't. give the people what they want. All right. Um, do we do we knock we out the talk- weekend, Bracky? Yeah, we 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 covered it all. Let's go. Okay, it's almost uh, it's almost time. Hey, Bader's coming on, guys. Um, oh, right now. No, soon he's uh he's dropping off Sweet Bella, and then uh, he's gonna be in here talking talk about oh, the so Gable doc. Are we waiting for him? We're waiting for him to talk about Dan Gable. We're just gonna sit here quietly until he gets here. No, we no we can talk about it before because there's a there's a um there's a, there's an angle that's sort of Bader specific that I want to talk with him about. But um, oh. have you watched well, it, Ben? Or hey, what are I, I want to make thoughts? sure. No, here's what I want to do, Christian. I almost okay. started the show with this. I, I want to clarify my thoughts. 
just just lay them out there perfectly smoothly about Dan Gable because you guys were airing that clip. I know you guys, you freaking flow guys are clickbaity as shit. Uh, <laughs> I was actually here's impressed I that they. I don't know. I don't know who posted. I, I it's either Oliver or JMZ, but I, I'm surprised they, they found were, that. Yeah, that was a really long time ago. Relatively, and we do you know four and a half hours of this show a week. I'm surprised they remember that. Yeah. So Dan Gable is very clearly one of the two best coaches ever to grace America's presence, right? And it was very clear, number one, now you have, you have Kale Sanderson, and I think Kale Sanderson can make a very good argument, and his, his resume is not done at all. So Dan Gable is very clearly one of the best coaches. What I was trying to express is that there's so many guys who try to knock off Dan Gable. They don't have the intellect or the genius that he had. And, you know, I think a lot of his genius came within the, the sports psychology realm, knowing how to talk to guys, knowing how to get the best out of them, that kind of stuff. But you have all these guys that want to knock off Gable and they want to say it's all about just, just working hard, just working hard, just working hard. We're just going to get our opponent tired, which I, it, it feels good, of course, right? And it is an important aspect of wrestling, but it is not the only aspect. Um, it's not the only aspect to wrestling. Right. And so I just felt like and I, I, don't, I don't even remember what we were discussing at this time, but I feel like um, really, I don't know. And I don't necessarily know that you would say Jordan Burroughs was the catalyst to switching it over. And I don't really know what America caused to switch over. But we have went to a significantly more technical style in the last handful of years and we're having a lot more success. And we did not lose the cardio. It's not like you see, oh, Jordan Burroughs, he's out of shape at Worlds. He's just really slick. Or David Taylor, who's really slick, he gets out of – No, we have guys who are in great shape, and they have great technique. And so that I guess that was kind of my point. It was, was, wasn't was supposed to be – I feel like a lot of people think it was a knock on Gable, and that's not what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be more like there's a lot of people trying to copy uh, what he did, and the, and the copies are always quite a bit uh, worse than the original. Yeah, well, they were they were copying, but they weren't actually copying what he was doing. They were copying what Correct. they thought he was doing. They had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. They had no idea how he was yeah. working with athletes or how he was with giving them time off or whatever. And they certainly did work really, really hard. But I mean, I think there's there, there's a there's a lost element. Just like um, I don't know. I guess no one really has an idea of what or how Penn State trains, but I'm sure yeah. there are people it's very trying. Very similar to Kale. Yeah, they're probably trying to knock – people would try to knock that off, but they wouldn't even know how to do it if, even if they were, right? And I think yeah. – I think I get what you meant with Gable. It was like you said – I think your quote was that he, he set wrestling back, but – Yeah, and that, so I, I felt like that was uh, maybe too strong of a lead-in, and I, maybe I, – I know I kind of like put my thoughts out there, but I wanted to put them out as clear as possible. Yeah, well, I, th I think – what you said can be true in that Gable's influence was so vast and the the view of what he was actually doing was not congruent with what was actually happening, but the view of what people yeah. thought was happening caused a whole nation to like go down this path that was like, it didn't work. It's not helpful. It doesn't make you a super elite um, wrestling nation, yeah. right? And it is yes. now that you mention it. What is the, what was the catalyst for us getting? So I was have it no idea. was it Jordan? You know, but Joe. I mean, Jordan wasn't known as like a super technical slick guy. I mean, obviously, I think he has those tools, but that's yeah. not kind of what he's known for. Um, it, was it uh, Zeke Jones had a little bit of influence, or, or was it just Americans kind of as a whole coming to uh, realization with what happened? Maybe uh, you know another thing that kind of was happening right around that time period is that we were actually having access to watching film of international guys. So maybe we were able to start stealing some of their techniques um, because that it was really, I don't want to say totally inaccessible, but it was really difficult when I was in, uh, when I was in, you know, 2006, seven, eight, it was really difficult, but th there has been some catalyst to the point where our guys are really, really freaking technical now. And they're also in good shape. You, I mean, name our starting lineup, and you're not one of those guys you say, oh, yeah, that dude gasses out. Like, none of them do. No. No, it doesn't. I, I don't know. Maybe. I guess gassing still still happens, but it's sort of, at, at that level, it's pretty rare to, rare to see. It happens American. a lot less. Yeah, it happens a lot less. You really, you really can't count yeah. on it it's, as a, it's like a plan D type of thing, but you, you can't really, it can't be the reason you're going to win the big matches. 
But yeah, the I'm I'm curious yeah. now. Like what what flipped the switch? You know, Jordan won his first title the same year Penn State won their first title. So maybe it was like <clears throat> that stuff happening in uh, in concert. Well, Is that an impact? But Penn State didn't really have a gigantic impact. At least, at least. So I mean, I'm, what I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking on the international level. Penn State didn't really start having a huge impact on the international level team until a handful of years later than that. Um, yeah. So I mean, because dominant look, RTC had, at that time was the Ohio RTC, and they put like five Ohio or seven RTC. guys on a team one year. Um, yeah, they were I don't really know if good. that I don't know if that was that had an impact. It's it's interesting. I don't know. So, yeah, so it, it doesn't really feel like there was one like event that happened. It was just kind of you know everyone together finding that switch um, because you you weren't seeing um, and this is my era, so I'm crapping on myself too, right? In my, in my era, you weren't seeing nearly the level of technical wrestling that you're seeing today. These guys today. Um, and I think it maybe is world, worldwide also, but we were, if we're saying on a technical perspective, we were behind the curve um, in that 2003 through 10 era. And now, you know, 2000, we'll say 13 through 2020, we are, we're, we're right in there with anybody from a technical standpoint. Yeah, no question. Um, I'm always pretty bullish on Team, team USA. What were you saying, Bracky? Uh, I was just going to get back to the coaching thing with, him and him and uh kale i know ben kind of mentioned it for a second but nomad did this article like comparing the two and as good as kale's been like this just illustrates how good gable was and this is a few quotes from the article to equal gable's average ncaa finish the teams coached by sanderson would have to win the next 22 consecutive national tournaments uh using what? just penn state they'd have to win the next 13 straight times Oh, and then because oh. I was. Why is that? Is this because Penn State yeah. had one really bad year? Is that why? Kyle, I don't know exactly why. I'd have to look at the numbers. This is just quotes from the article, bad. and then God. um, Kale's had eight All Americans once. Uh, Gable had eight or more eleven times. Jeez, he never had the ten, did he? They kind of no, I don't it. think so. I think he no, had nine. Because Minnesota did have nine. The only one. What, what about total number of national champions? Where where are they at with each other? You know, what was Gable's total and what's Kale's uh, total? Do you have that in there? Uh, hang on one second. Because what is so, the other interesting Kale, Kale at Penn State is at 23 national champs. How many did he have at Iowa State? Only a couple. Not very many. Um, oh, hey, well, you guys while keep he, talking. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. While, while Kyle finds that, um, Christian, one of the other things to think about, you know, we bring up when we talk about international wrestling is that there's more countries now, right? The USSR is, um, you know, a whole bunch of teams and Russians transferred to all kinds of places. But back then, um, I wonder how many more teams Gable was competing against at NCAA level. And it, does that make it harder for other teams to be good or does it make it easier? You well, understand what I'm saying there? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I'm I'm, I'm curious about that as well. Like how did it got way more. There were way more teams for sure that Gable was Has competing be, yeah. against. Um the the question is which era is tougher to win in? Is it tougher to win now because wrestling has improved so much? Well, I, I was thinking more like if you have 120 teams, um, especially without the ability to recruit across the nation, the talent would be maybe more spread out, or the you right the the good guys would get more spread out um, versus you know not Penn State's not the only place getting great recruits now. We're seeing these really good clusters at Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa, Oklahoma State, all these places, um, and maybe. If I uh, random state, right? Maybe if there was someone, the team in Georgia, maybe University of Georgia was there. Um, Iowa wouldn't get someone from Georgia. I don't know. Did they have anyone from Georgia? No. <laughs> Not sure. Right. Do you see what I'm saying though? Yes. Maybe that yes. person would have stayed home. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think the era discussion is, is interesting. It would seem like more teams would make it tougher, but just part of me. So like that side of the, the angle is like, okay, it was, it was a tougher era. But then this is something I'm just saying. I don't know if it's true, but it feels like 
the level of wrestling is a lot higher and it's a lot harder to oh, win now. That, well, hold on, but that's <laughs> that's a, but no, 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 the level the level of wrestling being higher, I think, is obvious. Obvious, even yeah. even from twenty years ago, I think it's obvious when you when you just watch the film. But that being said, if everyone's dealing with the same circumstances, doesn't the difficulty become the same? Or no? E. I think I think the I think the difficulty would be the same if everyone in the United States is dealing with the same circumstances. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Um But so obviously we, wrestling's better today than it was twenty years ago or forty years ago. That's there's no doubt about that. Yeah. No, I suppose that's true. Um so one we had a we have some questions from friends. Some of them are gable related, so we're kinda of bumping those up. But someone I, real asked, quick, I got the champ numbers if you want those oh, yeah. really quick. Hit me. So Gable had Gable had forty five champs and him and Kale um through their first thirteen years each had twenty five. Mm -hmm. So the one number wow. he can definitely get the one number he can definitely get to him at is champs. He, I mean, it's going to be really hard. It, it, no man laid it on. It's pretty much impossible for him to hit the same number of All-Americans. He would need to average like eight for the next decade, which he's only done once. Um, Jeez. Yeah, so, but he can get it. He could reach him in champs probably the way he's going. I do remember looking back through some of the old record books and Gable, there was like multiple Big Tens where Gable would have six or seven or eight champions in the Big Ten. Um, which I don't think Kale's ever done that. And maybe that speaks to the Big Ten being tougher today than it was uh, back then. Yes. Um, so here's a question. With it, uh, being, with it being Gable Day and all, how do you think Dan Gable would fare in today's NCAA landscape? Uh, it says as a competitor, but I was thinking like as, as a coach, like his coaching style. I'm sure as a competitor, it's almost like impossible to answer. Um, well... I mean, I, I would go back to what I just said. If he is a competitor, are we are we literally time warping him, or are we putting him in the room so he gets a drill with guys in twenty twenty? Yeah, let's do that because I think I I, I He's think gonna figure just, it out. Just go figure it out. I, and I think similarly with coaching, like there's some transcendent uh, people in all sports. Like Michael Jordan would be yeah. great in any era ever, and Dan Gable well, would. They, yeah, they're not Christian. They're not great. They're great because they could figure it out in yeah. that era, and they're gonna they're they're so smart. They're gonna figure it out in any era. Yes, I agree. Would um, and here's yeah, just thinking about Gable. Oh, Bader would maybe be better um to tell this story. But yesterday on the Bader show, he had Pat Lugo on, and he had never you know he hadn't met Gable, and then he. Went to world team trials and he lost. He, he kind of got beat up a little bit. I forget by who. Might have been Deacon. And Gable like just said something like, "Hey, you're you're the guy that got like, yeah, you're the guy that got a beat down or just got got his butt whooped or something like that." But he's like, he wasn't talking trash. He's like, it literally the way he said it like got Lugo pumped up. Like he just still knows like has this innate sense of how to like push buttons and and yeah. inspire guys it's it's sort of uncanny um i don't i don't think everyone everyone has that and i think that was his his secret sauce more than anything is understanding how to motivate his athletes then i yeah. thought this was a really interesting question too every coach has their favorite athlete regardless of what they say who was gable's favorite wrestler he coached i've had a theory about this for a while but i'm curious oh. what you guys think <sighs> I have, man, I have no idea. How am I supposed to know this? Has he, has he talked about this? I'm just have done my research or something. No, I, I'm sure he hasn't said this is my favorite wrestler. But I, there's just a guy who always comes up when when he's talking about people or when he's kind of like revisiting wrestlers. There's a name that was, he always, 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 and this is not his best wrestler, but he's a great one. Royce Alger. He talks about Royce with like really, yeah, I. I, this is just something I've observed. I feel like in so many interviews, he brings up Royce and how he wrestled and how tough he was and this and that. I'm like, because cause I remember at the time, listen to that, I was like, man, he coached, he coached Tom, he coached Lincoln McElravey, Terry, all these guys, Barry Davis, that were like credential-wise better than Royce. But like, I feel like there was just something about the style that Royce wrestled with or maybe it's just like, 
personal thing, but he he really loved Royce Royce Alger. I, that's just a, a really? theory. I don't know if deep down that's his favorite wrestler, but it's just something I observed just listening to him a bunch. I was like, he's really got a, he's really got a special spot for Royce. So man, I, I feel like Royce would be like, I don't know. You were a coach, Christian. So there's some of these dudes you coach where you're like. You're kind of funny, but you are a pain in my butt. Yes, it's like if I was your if I was your teammate, we I'm sure we'd be buddies, right? But I'm not your teammate, and, and I got to keep you in line and make sure you don't get out of line, and I got to make sure everyone knows that I'm the boss and and you're in line. So then we have like a little bit of butting heads, you know, and, and, he's, and they're kind of a pain in my butt. But you know, at the same time, like if you were their teammate, he'd be hilarious, and you'd be their buddy. You know, I feel like that's what Royce would be. I I wonder if he was as I'm sure he was a huge personality. Oh, he but, had to be. Come on, uh, for sure. But what? How did that manifest itself? Um, you know, when he was on the team, what was he like? I mean, I'm sure. Listen, I I think the uh, the lifestyle choices were different back then too. Like you you could be a little. You mean you, everyone could go party? Yeah, I th- oh, I don't know if everyone could, but I know that it, I think it was a little more prevalent than. Maybe it is now. Who knows? Maybe I'm naive about the way it is right now. Um, yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he. I'm sure he was a challenge, but I think there was something about how he wrestled or or whatever. And yes, I do know those those kids you're talking about. But you know what? It's funny because <laughs> in the time, I just remember I was really frustrated with some of these kids. But now I look back and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, this kid is hilarious. Like, I really appreciate. That those kids and they actually brought necessary levity to the the situation. Um, a, a lot of times when it was maybe really necessary. I remember. I don't know yeah. if I want to tell this story or not. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just tell it. Turtles. Listen, man. I I was um. It was a state tournament. This kid's senior year, and listen, th- these guys basically. Almost all of them dipped snuff, and they knew they were not allowed to, and they never did it. <laughs> they never did it around me, but it was just like a thing. And like these these kids, just they dip. And the one, uh, so whatever, I'm going and checking on them. Uh, it's states. This kid's senior year, like he he's really good. He could he had a chance to to win it. And the but two seniors are in this room. I go check on them, I'm talking with them, and user. I go in the restroom. And there's all these pellets in in the bottom of the toilet. These round tell, oh and I goodness. said, I said, and this is like a good old boy, Buffalo Gap kid, right? I'm like, hey, kid, name, what's this? And he was like, he's like, he acts all confused. He's like, I said, I don't know. He's like, he's like, it might be pipe. <laughs> he says. It might be pipe sediment. <laughs> and I just figured, I just lost it. I laughed so hard because I was really mad. And then this kid out of nowhere pulls pipe sediment. And I was like, oh my. Just like, I was like, name, just get out of here. This, uh, all right, whatever. And I just, I left. Whoa. But it was so, I, I just, I st- it's, that story still kills me. That he said pipe sediment. Like, where did he? Well, come- he must, he must have been grilled on that one before, because there's no way he just came up with pipe sediment. Out of Maybe nowhere. not. I don't know. The he was a uh, yeah. That for me, that was like one of my favorite kids to kids to coach. Um, pipe sediment. Oh my god. Pipe sediment. Give me a freaking break. Um. So yeah. Um. Why don't we, where, where do you want to go now? Do we want to go to questions and when Gable gets, or Gable, when Bader gets here, we can uh, talk more about Gable? Yeah, Bader's, Bader's late. He's, he's never late. I don't know what he's doing. No, he's not late. I told him like 9.15 <laughs> would be fine. Um, okay, let's do questions. Okay, cool. Um, first question. Um, oh, God. I'm curious for this one. Um Maybe I'm curious for what Bracky thinks, but who in your respective athletic or coaching career struck you as a particularly talented recruiter? What qualities did they possess that made them good at recruiting? Um, well, I would, I mean, I was, I've met a whole bunch, but coach Smith, definitely. Um, and, and maybe it's cause I've watched him recruit so many guys, right. He recruited me. Then I was, uh, I was a host a lot. So I would see him 
right, for the next seven years, that's how I recruit people. Um, he was just very, very personable, could connect with kids and connect with the parents at the same time, which I think is, you know, you have to have kind of two different personalities to connect with the kid and the parent at the same time. Um, so, man, he, he always did a great job, I thought. Um, uh, if you guys got some, I, I, have, I have to think more. Because I haven't spent too much time in the college recruiting circles. Mm, yeah, true, true. Rocky, who's, who came to mind for you? Um, I'm not sure who came to mind for me as much as, like, the traits and qualities of good recruiters. I, I think what Ben was saying, obviously, is really important. But I also think you need to come across as genuine. Like, you're not – this isn't mm-hmm. – because, like, I feel like recruiting can definitely be, like, a sales pitchy if you're doing it the wrong way. Yes. And kind of, like, use carsman, use car salesman type thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But So the, the the best ones come across as, as really genuine. They're straight shooters. They're not going to BS you and, and tell you all this, all this stuff that's not true. Um, I mean, it's hard to argue with what, with what, Kale has done, yeah. um, on the on the recruiting trail, yeah. um, and like to to go into football too. Like Nick Saban is an amazing recruiter because of all those things. I think he's really genuine. He's straight to the point. He's really good with parents. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of people in wrestling that have like really struck me or impressed me. Well, I th- I yeah, think I mean, about yeah. right, Christian. I was just gonna say uh, there's a couple names that I know like these guys are like really solid recruiters and they just like put the time in. Um, Lee Pritz is a maniac. That guy is just always on it. Um, Nate Engel and uh, Frank Beasley back in the in the NC State days. Now he's at George Mason. I'm sure he's firing up the phones and making it happen. Those those are I know just a couple years ago those guys really stuck out to me. Cause you know it's like uh, one of those things where like depending on the team, it's like it's like a job of one of the guys. Like you're the recruiter. Like Ryan Morningstar leads a lot of the recruiting efforts at at Iowa, and um, you know when you know Beasley did a lot of that at NC State. Obviously, the head coach has a huge role in that, but like it kind of gets delegated out, right? So it's not always the the head coach on on wrestling teams that is like the main recruiter, tip of the spear type of guy. What yeah. a guy that has come to mind for me now that you're talking. Um, and if you look at what they've done uh, over the past two years, uh, is uh, Jared Freyer at Virginia Tech. Yeah. Um, la- last year they signed Kaka, Hilligus, Olray, and Tresca out of Jersey. And the year before that, uh, his first year, they, they signed Connor, Connor Brady, Bryce Andoni, and, and Sam Latona. Um, nice. And that's a guy that is just always working the phones and grinding you see him out at tournaments all the time before this dead period um he, he's the guy that comes to mind as well yeah and um one of the things i think there, there's a couple people so obviously with kale you have to um I, i've never been recruited by him um i've never really had anyone that's been recruited by him um but just success speaks for itself but and i think when i think about him and pat pop one of the things they do is they get guys who fit their mold, right? They get the guys that they want to get. It's not like just go get the best guy that I could fill this void with. It's get the guy who fills my type of style that I want there, which, you know, Kale will be um, the dynamic, fearless guy who's just going to go wrestle in all kinds of really strange positions. Um, and Pat Pop, I feel like somewhere, somehow somebody's got like all of this tall, I mean, the Hidley brother, Hidley Hidley brothers don't fit the mold, but tall, skinnier guys who wrestle really hard and are great on top. Yes, yeah. Um, I, th- I think they have good instincts. I think Pat and uh, Kale both have really good – they have good discernment in their recruiting too. They have a good eye for what's going to fit their system. Um, oh, I forget what else. Oh, I remember – I remember what I was going to say. I remember a blue, blue chip recruit a couple years ago rec- was recruited heavily by Penn State, and he ended up not going there. And I remember talking with the dad afterwards and he's like, dude, Kale is really, really good at this. Like you have no idea how, um, like how much he made it. Like this was a kid that was definitely always a heavy lean to a certain school. And they're like, 
Kale really made it made it tough, and he is really good, and he's very convincing. But he's very I don't he, the, the guy was just like so complimentary of like how good he was at it, and like not in a weird way, just like he's he's just a good recruiter. I'm texting think, you my guess. I'm texting you my guess on what you just the story you just told. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think another thing that kind of sets Kale apart is too is like CP was saying like a lot of assistants are like the head recruiters and do a lot of the heavy lifting and then maybe the head coach is kind of like the closer and cleans things up mm-hmm. or like seals the deal. Kale is very very involved. Uh, yes. I would say much much more so than a lot of other head coaches. And I mean, why not be if you're uh-huh. family, you know you're the best college wrestler of all time. Um, let that let that work for you. Let that work in your favor. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. I think I think that's one of their one of their big weapons is that he's so involved in recruiting, right? Yes. It's not like delegated mm-hmm. out. Okay. Yeah. Um. Next question. Um. Oh, this is funny. If you wrestled for Gable back in the day, would you want him to slap you in the face before your match? Gable would, if with the parents' permission. Slap the dudes in the face a couple times. Make sure they're ready. Would you get your face slapped, Ben and or Bracky? No I feel, way. I was like, yeah, Ben is definitely not. Why? Why? <laughs> Listen, I know how to show up and bring the heat. I don't need to get slapped to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm I'm getting slapped for sure. Yeah, I think. I, <laughs> Bracky loves it. <laughs> I don't know. May, maybe uh, maybe it's something you just slapped. need. Yeah, he holds. Yeah, I like how he holds the face. Um, yeah, he got Joe Williams a couple good times on the on the thing. So, yeah, I don't it's know. Like a, it's like a smelling salt. Was it yeah. every single wrestler he slapped, or what? No, he had to. He the the wrestler had to want it, and he had to get the parents' permission. Oh, got it. Okay, interesting. Huh? I wonder. Would you be like an outcast if you? Uh said no to it or something with the all the guys on the team make fun of you i don't think he slapped everyone's face i don't think it was like oh there's like nine out of ten i think it was like very even i would be like listen if you don't know how to start fast if you don't know how to get out there and wrestle bring some heat i'm gonna slap you but if you're bringing heat you don't need me to slap you you're good you can you can handle this you're a big boy but if you don't start bringing the heat then i'm gonna pop you one it's kind of a funny thing um, you don't see as much slapping. Uh, you don't see as much no. slapping anymore. But that's that's probably okay, right? I don't think it's a necessity because you know what? Because it's like no, I don't think it's necessary. But it's it's one of those things. Speaking of Gable's like influence, oh wow, well, everybody did it. He's slapping everybody. his kids. I gotta slap. Well, you gotta get smacked. You gotta get smacked in the face. And an idiot is always gonna take it too far the wrong way. You're not Gable, dude. Don't even try. You don't even understand like the decision making process. I, I, I would. I don't even know. But that became pretty popular, Christian. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like in the mid '90s, for sure. Yeah. And you know, some people were like, "Man, if he's smacking them in the right before the match, you know, he's giving them a good slap every 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 couple practices." Blah blah blah. And the next thing you know, <laughs> you're just having slap practices. I think every ever FRL once Bracky stops duck in West Virginia and gets back in the studio, I think Bader should come in and slap you both. He would love the it. Show. He would love he it. He would love it. <laughs> yeah. He would probably the love Santo, it. Too much. The Santo gets a slap now. He is really? he, Yeah. We have a there's yeah. a pretty famous video of him uh, I mean I call it famous, but it, it, we posted it on Instagram and a lot of people watched it. Uh, yes. of him like getting smacked by Tom uh, before a match. There was also there was also a time like at Midlands he was getting ready because they thought the match was about to end, and like I I, I don't remember I think it was Tom oh he's getting ready to, he closed his eyes he's getting ready to smack him, and then the Santa oh, like closes his eyes to get ready for it, and then Tom just doesn't do it because the match didn't end. Like Tom like looked up at the clock and like saw that the match wasn't gonna end, and then but the Santa had like his Man. eyes closed like ready for it. Oh, that's classic. That's so yeah. classic. Yeah. Yes. All right, Gable one. gets to start on top. Two minutes. How does each of you fare? He, he how, old is, how old is he? I, I don't know. I think any version of, of Gable. Um, well, is he like 26 or is he like nah. you know, near, nearing his hip surgery? 
Well, we're definitely not going to say now, but you know, like he has hip surgery. He's like 47, 48. I'm man enough to admit that Dan Gable could ride me out right now, Ben. I don't think I can. Think so? I think he'd probably just get my wrists and, and get heavy. He'd be done. I, yeah. Get I think that grip, pull it I, in, grind you down. Yeah. And like re- top wrestling is like probably of the positions you need to be the least. I'm just saying this as a terrible wrestler, but like the least physically dynamic, like there's no. Oh yeah. And you don't need to be dynamic at all. Yeah. It's like a bo- detriment, honestly. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, it bottom, is. you need to be powerful and go, okay, good. So, you know, I feel like he could just like one good chop, you know, and it gets my, gets a near wrist. I feel like that could be it. And I wouldn't get away. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, he's like 70. So there's, there's, there's yeah. a chance I could get away. Um, no, that, that's for sure true, Chris. I mean, so you think of like the ex- really explosive, powerful guys, they can explode with power, but they can't like clamp for long, you know, the isometric strength, they can't do that. And so really explosive guys generally struggle on top. They're, they're not good there. And the guys who, a lot of, honestly, you think about like the, some of those clumsy guys who can't move their feet and they look like crap on their, uh, when they're in the neutral position, all of a sudden they get on top and they're a freaking animal. Like, you know who like was the best example of the, penultimate example of this ever and i don't know maybe i'm too old for you guys jake jake patrasil remember that dude jake pataxel yeah he was terrible on uh, the neutral and this dude got on top and he put the clamps on your wrists and he was like, till 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 you know it was ridiculous yeah he would be uh i'm joined i'm being joined by uh mark bader right now he's getting his earpiece in but Pataxil was one of those guys where like he would just, like the match would start from neutral and he would just like grab the wrists and like try to hold on just oh trying God. to he just wants to make it to the second and third period and then once he got on top he was freaking lethal with the Dude. with the tilts. Mark Bader yes. knows Mark S. Bader. I remember. I, I remember. think you should ask Mark S. Bader this question about Dan Gable, the one that you just answered. What's yeah, bring okay. it on. Gabe, uh, about top wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, Gable gets uh, start on top two minutes. Um, how do how do you fare today? Yeah, what are we saying? Are we saying today? No, I we'll said say, he would ride me out today. 40, I say he's forty five. Forty plays forty five. Okay, no chance. Yeah, you're not getting forty five. No, he was still probably. Peter, record- come on, man. Let's I, go. You can get out. You can do it. He's chopped wood with the man. He's <laughs> he's seen he's, forty. He's 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 like seventy, early seventies, yeah. I think. Oh. This is third. This is. 25 years ago still still coaching at iowa i don't i i mean I, I, the doc that just came out it's on the site like the man that's in that video is 49 i guess because yeah. that's when he stopped coaching dude looks like a beast um and is 72 think, years old currently yeah i think it, at, at, at and we're talking about in his 20 years ago yeah i think it would pin that 20 years ago i think he pinned Ben. Peter, you dude, stop. he's putting I'll the play wrist play on the back and it's over. Yeah, I've seen it. Bader, have you have has he grabbed you? Like, how strong is he when he grabs a hold of you? He's got. I mean, he's he's pretty strong, right? I don't I don't, I don't know if you saw us. We did the snowed in with Gable Dan Gable. Yeah, a uh-huh. year a year ago or so. And I mean, he's throwing weights around with Royce. Like he's freaking throwing them around. Um, yeah, I, I was really I'm like seventy freaking a. My parents aren't. My parents are a little older. My dad couldn't throw that weight around for twenty yeah. years. You know. He's, he's, so if you go 20 years back, man, I don't yeah. know. Another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious for, for your answer on this one. We asked, uh, okay, so it was, it was an FRL question, but it was Gable related. So um, every coach has their favorite athlete, regardless of what they say. Who was Gable's favorite wrestler he coached? Who do you think, Bader? You probably interviewed and talked to Gable as, as much as anyone. I mean, yeah, but I couldn't, c- couldn't get that. Even even start to feel like I got that from him, and this not, the simple answer might be Tom Brands. Okay, because Ooh. I don't know, okay. right? He's a head coach, and he he was very successful, and he seems to embody a lot of the philosophies that Gable seemed to embody. Um, but I don't know that to be the case. Well, I say I don't know that that's not the answer. But my theory, or just from listening to a bunch of Gable interviews, was that it might be Royce. Sure. I feel like he loved Royce. I think a lot of those guys embodied a lot of the same ideas, and I think Royce, surely. And then, of course, <clears throat> he had that, like, side gig of just, like, being a goofball amongst, I don't know how many, you know, I don't know what the makeup of the team was like, but Royce seemed like the biggest goofball. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were definitely talking about that. Bring some levity to the situation, as he would say. Yes. It's Bring necessary. Some levity to the situation. This is still too tough to take too seriously. Yeah, he's right <laughs> about that. Okay, so this uh, Gable saga of getting this video <laughs> on the site has been um, a vision quest of sorts for Mark Bader going back. I don't know how long. We've been talking about this thing for literally years, and I figured it'd be fun to have Bader on to talk about this. It really was a saga to get this thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I don't think back to the very beginning. Somebody reached out, sent me an email, and was like, hey, I think there, there's like this documentary that was made that's just like sitting there, and it's like, it's, you know, getting dust on it. It's going to go to the trash probably eventually. I think it fit really well in with what you guys do. And they said, reach out to this group. This group made it or, or these couple different groups came together and, and made this. So I'm like, well, I don't know anybody about from any of these groups. How do I, I don't even remember how I started looking, but I, I finally get up. Maybe I go find the, the, the video online and I see like who it was made by or something. So I start calling and, and I call a few people to get a hold of somebody and I finally get a hold of this guy after months explain who I am and that what flow and we want to we're interested in, in acquiring this and it was like oh he's like scratching his head he's like that was so long ago I don't you know and it's gosh are you sure and I'm like yes <laughs> yes I'm, I'm so sure and we you know and it was like months in between you know I talked to this guy and we'd have a good conversation and then like months would go by and we wouldn't communicate and I'd some Christian or somebody be like, hey, how's it? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got a call. But three calls later, he finally answers my fourth one. And this goes on for three, four, six months. I don't know. But finally get a hold of him. And he's he's all in. And he's, he, was, he, he thinks it's a good idea. But now we got to get a hold of the copyright fell on three people, Coach Gable and like two people from different organizations or something like that. And the first guy agreed. Now we got to get a hold of the second guy. Track down his phone number somehow, call, leave a message, nothing. A couple weeks or a month later, call, leave a message, nothing. Yeah, maybe a couple months goes by and I call him again. And then, then all of a sudden I'm like, what if I just call this guy every day? What if I just call him like every, hey, my name's Mark Bader. I work at Flow Sports and blah, 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 blah. Like the same message over and over. And I found his email <laughs> and I emailed him, right? And I emailed him not quite as incessantly as I called, but – um. And he finally hits me back, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, you, I." <laughs> and maybe he doesn't check. You his are voice so most, annoying. Well, <laughs> persistent. Partly, persistent. Yeah, he, he did use the word persistent, but I could see why he might have thought annoying. But he finally hits me back, and the first time, it's it's nice. He's like, "You're you're very persistent." And okay, I don't know how to figure this out because <sighs> the the t copyright fell on Gable and this other guy, and 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 a third person, but. They no longer work there, and that position no longer exists within the organization. But the copyright does fall on oh somebody within a different branch or department or something. Let me find out what branch it goes under and then what person. Executive branch, man. Yeah, no, those, that's a different kind okay, of branch. Okay, sorry. Assistant and regional manager. And uh, assistant, yes, too. And I guess long story short, I play the same game with – two or three or four different people. And finally, they're like, yeah, we're on board. We discuss, you know, payment and getting it all sorted out, making sure the footage was all cleared. And so finally, I, I swear, every time I was talking to Christian over this two years, I'm like, yeah, it's looking good. This guy, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, literally. This is great. It's going to happen. And then like three months later, I'm like, dude, I just got off the phone with guys. Great call. Really, they were going to do it. And then like a year and a half later, I'm like, having the same conversation but finally i'm like we've agreed they've agreed they've like uh a contract or whatever gets sent out and everybody agrees and then we're like cool we're gonna make this happen and i'm like so how do i get this like yeah how do i get and they let me they sent me a link to watch it once because i had watched it back yeah. in, when it originally appeared aired but i didn't i hadn't seen it since so i, I watched it again i'm like yeah it's really good but it's like uh, you know it's this big it's really it's on the internet and it's low quality and you can't put it on your tv to watch a roku or whatever so i'm like how do i get a copy of it and they're like oh how do we and they're like we have it on dvd can we send you that i'm like no that's not going to work that's going to be small and so now we're back to like okay still trying to sort things out and i get a hold of somebody in the i don't know whatever department and they're like we have it i'm like sweet can you send it 
They're like, yeah, like, oh no, we have to send it off to get it digitized. And I'm like, okay, how long does that take? They're like six to eight weeks. I'm like, we just had everything <laughs> sorted out. We're six to eight weeks. I thought we like could start doing this tomorrow. Yeah. That must have been in September, October. Yeah, 12 weeks later. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hey, how about you just you send it to me? We'll digitize it. We'll send you the copy back. We'll send you a digital version. We can get this done. Right? We have that's kind of what part we of what do we that. do here. And she's like, okay, we'll send it. I'm like, yes. And then she emails me back or calls me back. She says, no, sorry, process at this organization says we have to send it off oh, to whatever. To, I'm like, okay, I guess we'll wait. We'll wait. Two years, what's two months? And uh, long story short, we got it. And actually, they sent over all these different files, and some of them were high quality, some were low quality, some were like huge, like 30 gigs, some were like two, and I like, find this big one, and I – just upload it to the site and I'm like, okay, cool. And like a, a week or two ago, I'm like, let me just double check. Well, the film was split to like an hour and 10 minute and then like another 20 minute chunk or something like that. And I had just only uploaded the hour and 10 <laughs> chunk. So I'm really glad I went back and looked because people would have like, it would have ended and people <laughs> like would have been like, 20 minutes long. wait, uh, we did all this. They went all the way through his life and we went all the way through the big tens in 1997 and- The film ends? That you know it goes through nationals in the end, but I so I got them, stitched them together, deleted the one, uploaded the new one. The whole thing's up there, hundred or I mean, an hour thirty eight minutes or something. Yeah, like it's that. long. And here we are. He did it. There this you is, go, Mark Bader. Ba Bader's been on this. This was his white whale. Ah, <laughs> uh, it would have taken anyone else ten years to get it done. Maybe, but, maybe much less. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bader, was it tougher getting this? On the site or Metcalf on the site? This, for sure. Way and harder. I know Metcalf, okay. uh, people were not happy impatient. with how long. It, impatient might be the word. Um, that was just, um, that was on us. So it was like, okay, we need to get it together. We need to gather another interviewer or two. We need to, you know, find uh -huh. space with our editors to, to be able to work on it. And maybe they'd get stopped because they got to work on another project for a week or something. So uh, this was harder because it sort of was out of our control. You know, it's like, okay, I can make as many calls as I want, but until we both sides get this <laughs> lined up, it's not going to happen. Metcalf was, yeah, it took a while, but it, um, like I said, it was, it was within our control. Um, this one wasn't. Yeah, and like I would always, um, I don't know, probably once a week, I'd just be like, I'd just go to bed, I'd be like, sup with Gable. And he, uh, there was never a time he didn't have a new update for me. <laughs> of course, the updates basically never meant anything. They're for all the, the same. Most, they're all the same. I'm excited, but he's like, gonna happen. he would always be like, emailed the guy yesterday. He hit me back. He said this thing, and then I'm well, like, then, all right. Like you know, I, this the first guy I talked to. Like we had a couple good conversations over a couple months, and then several months go by. And maybe I left two, three email uh, voicemails. And he hits me back, and he's like, and he's a super nice guy. He's like, hey, I'm really sorry, but I, I, I get the feeling he's a little older, maybe in his 60s, I'm not sure. But he's like, you know, hey, sorry, my, my father-in-law died. And tell me all, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. Nope, <laughs> we're not I'm trying to breathe down your neck. <laughs> I'm not going to leave you another voicemail for at least 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, okay. And then after a little while, I'd hit him back up. And, and like he was giving me updates on his personal life as well. And I felt like I got to know this guy and yeah. you know, like we were friends. We should send him something. Happy New Year. Box of chocolates. Thanks for Gable. Yeah. So we have the film. It's on the site. You can watch it right now. T tell them a little bit about it. Well, I, I mean, it, I, I, I've kind of said it before, but the life of Dan Gable, right? So it tells the story of his life. Um, interwoven throughout that whole thing is um, basically like his last season of coaching, 1997 season. Kind of like in the movie Terry. It's the story of kind of the life of Terry and specifically 98 to 2000 and interwoven through that is like him at the U S open with, uh, Tony Ramos. So it's a, a similar, you know, jumping back and forth from present time to storytelling. Um, and, and it's just really cool that one it's, there's, you know, I don't know how many documentaries that there are on Gable out there that are accessible. Um, and two, you like get to see his last season. It's like, you know, i there wasn't a whole, there wasn't fluorescent. There wasn't YouTube. I don't know how in the '90s you could follow him besides Iowa Public Television and yeah. maybe a couple other things. So you like got what to was, see uh, 
him in his element coaching. Like he's a legend, right? What what was he doing? You what got to like feel the curtain back and see. One they had Bader. Take every it? kid had. Uh, what was that famous Co Gable one? That we're competitor about? supreme, right? Yeah, I was brought that up go. yesterday. Christian hadn't heard of it. Uh -uh. But yeah, yeah, you never I had seen that. it, Christian. I don't think I've seen awesome. competitor supreme. Are and, you and kidding we, me? When we were putting clips out uh, to promote this and, and and get people excited, people were saying, "It's just this, just clips from Competitor Supreme," and that's when I remembered. I was like, "Oh, Competitor Supreme, yeah, it was awesome." Um, but no, this is different. Great, Wait, great, so great one, Competitor seat. Supreme. Get, <laughs> yeah, it seems like we should get, get Competitor get Supreme. Supreme. We should <laughs> get that also. <laughs> we'll have it by the twenty twenty four Olympics. Yeah, why not? If it if we're on the same trajectory. Go. You can buy it for 25 bucks on uh, dangable.com. Yeah, well, I don't know that you can I buy it. Just put it on your website. Knows. I don't know. Dan Gable knows who we can buy the rights from then. Yeah, probably so. Um, hey, uh, uh, Supreme.com. Yep, I'm sure that's what it is. Sweet. <laughs> I'm adding to cart right now. I'm going to order Dan Gable. Oh, this is awesome. Supreme. I can't believe you've never watched this, Hot Piles. That may. It, Pals, maybe if you had watched this, you would have slapped your athletes. You should ask Mark Bader if he ever did that when he was a coach. Did you ever slap a slap an athlete? Probably. And I, I did see on the FRL question, somebody said, if you wrestled for Gable, would you have him slap you in the face? I'm like, well, I wrestled for Lee Pritz. And he did. <laughs> he grabbed me by the one side of the headgear and smacked me in the face and then grabbed my other side and smacked me in the face and be like, yeah, go get him. And I like turn around and be like, stumble out to the center of the mat, not seeing straight, but uh, <laughs> I was fired up. Uh, I never yeah. got slapped. I could get, I could see slapping getting Bader going. Yeah, yeah. I could. Yeah, and every could, once in a while at a meet, I'll be like, Christian, just slap me across the face. Be good for me. Yeah, he likes it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, I, one thing I think is cool is like uh -huh. there's so many. Oh, man, I don't even know. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> it's okay. Oh no. Keep going. This is. I know. It's, whatever it is, it's rated R for sure. Um, I actually 17. know this story. I've know this story. No, you don't. Oh, okay. No, no I you don't. don't. I know one. I know that. <laughs> Look at him sweating. He's red as his shirt right now. Mark Bader. Okay. 2008. Uh, I, I know Mark Bader too well. I, yeah. I just know him too well. Yeah. Oh man. Wonderful. I think you should get competitors supreme on the on the site also. Okay. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. That'll be Bader's next major project. That or Vision Quest. Which <laughs> Which do you think is a bigger opportunity? Or no, not Vision Quest. You know shot. what the bigger opportunity is? One yeah. last shot, baby. One last shot is what we really should. That's get. that's a shot. Oh, that or reversal, starring Justin Spates. Oh, reversal. That's a good one. I got to watch that seven times on my recruiting trip. Because <laughs> Justin Spates and with us, I think. Movie star. Yeah, yeah, with you guys. Yeah, good times. Good times. Okay. I bet you guys have never seen that, have you? I haven't. No, I've seen it. You don't even know what it is. Mm -mm. I think Major Vader's maybe talked to me reversal? about it. Um. It's a reversal or okie noodling. Which I don't know which one's better, but I'll take okie. Well, that was great. You should, you you guys should start a, a noodling you guys website. Start flow noodle, flow noodling. You know what noodling is? Tell me yeah, that catfish. One. Catch them with your. You go bare underground. Hands. You feel on the side of a uh, banks yeah. of, a, of a river or a pond. You just stick your hand there and you hope that. A, wait for a uh, a fish to chomp on it catfish and you pull the fish out. Like catfish. It. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And there was a whole video we used to watch about. I guess it's it was a documentary. Specifically, Oklahoma people. And they love it. Like backwoods kind of people. Yes. Yes. Very backwoods. Like Joe, <laughs> exotic Joe type people. Yes. <laughs> exotic Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Who says jo exotic Joe? Oh, man. It's cool watching the, the Gable doc because there's so many like current players in, in NCAA wrestling. You see Tony Erslin there with a bloody nose yep. yelling. You see Lincoln McElravey yelling about. Having to do the extra sprint because Mike or because Euchre, I think his name was Mike Euchre. Is that I'm, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it. Uh, -huh. uh it was like lagging in on a sprint. You see Royce in the background. You see Tom and Terry. You see Terry going off about a guy not not getting a pin <laughs> he call. Goes up on, Tom like has to grab him by the belt. He he literally says sit, like Tom corrals him and tells him, "Hey, you get back here." He says something hey, like that. Hey, missed it. He was pinned. He was pinned. Yeah, ah, I missed it. Yeah, typical fired up Terry. Love yeah, it. it was great. So it's it's just cool seeing all those guys. But behind the scenes, young John Smith, very young John Smith gets interviewed. I mean, for John it. Smith, uh, Coach Johnson J from J Illinois, Rob. J Rob, uh, Bobby Douglas, you name it. 
Uh, who was the talk show host back in the seventies? Uh, yeah, it's gonna escape me. But um, was Tom Arnold's in the in the <laughs> documentary. I didn't know he was from oh, Iowa. Geez. Apparently, he's from Iowa and loves loves the Hawks. Oh yeah, big Hawk fan. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, we're we're excited. There's already a ton of people watching on the site right now. Apparently, so that's cool. Hope you guys check it out. Um, Dan Gable, the life of the life of Dan Gable. We're we're super pumped to have it. Ben, did you have many uh, interactions with Gable uh, as an athlete? This is 2008, so obviously um, well, near Olympic none. He, he kind of wasn't around very much at, at that point in time. I mean, a, a few times, like maybe like at a national duels, right? That sure. was Cedar Falls every year. See him there. We wrestled in Ames a handful of times. Obviously, Big 12s were there and duels and stuff. Uh, but I feel like he maybe – obviously, we never dueled Iowa – um, yep. or wrestled tournament there during my time. But, yeah, I feel like he maybe just wasn't quite around as much um, during that era. Wasn't he coaching at Iowa? Or maybe You graduated in 07. I think oh, maybe when 08 he, or something like that he graduated. Or, I mean, coach. He one or two came years. back. It was, when, it was when Tom came back, right? Didn't he step on for a few years? Was it yeah. right when Tom came on or was it shortly thereafter? I think so. I think it was like the very first year. Okay. Yeah. That it was only like, for like – Two years, oh, three five, years, five, four. Um, I, yeah, I remember six, seven, because six, he seven, was maybe super. I think Dan was like super emotional when Perry beat Hendricks, and he was on staff at that point. And that was Tom's really. First, yes, that's that, what I thought. Like oh, oh, eight, nine, like not right. Well, Hendricks beat Perry in in NCAA's oh seven. Perry beat Hendricks. Talk about Perry Correct. beat. Hen yeah, yeah. Um, that was yeah. yes, that was Tom's first year. Perry beat Hendricks. And okay. Gable was on staff. I'm almost, I'm almost positive. Oh, okay. okay. There's your timeline. There you go. Um, oh. that, that must have been an awesome team to be on. Uh, okay. Well, I don't have anything else, Bader. What? Who's on? Who's on the? Who's oh, on the Bader show? Hey, hey, yeah, Bader show right here at uh, it up. 11:30 Eastern. We're gonna start. We are gonna have five-time world champion Adeline Gray. <laughs> And second guest of the day, uh, 40 minutes later, roughly, will be Tamara Mensa Stock. If you don't know, the wrestling on January 9th, right here in Austin, Texas, on that amazing card. We're going to see uh, Jordan Burroughs wrestle David Taylor on. And uh, we have this thing. If you've never seen the Bader Show, check it out sometime. But we have the overlapping question. We keep our first guest on, bring our second guest on. We have them ask each other a question. They're not usually people that are going to throw down in a couple of weeks. But this time it is. And... I mean, they seem pretty friendly. I don't know if there's going to be much chirping, but, no. you know. They can bring it out. You can make them hate each other, baby. <laughs> That's your job. They That's don't... Ben's job. Oh, yeah. Ben can do it. Hey, we have <laughs> another. We already added another match. I know we said we we're doing it. But uh -oh. Tristan what? Moran wrestling Mitch McKee. It's official. Ooh. Wait, that's happening? That's happening. It's signed. Oh, cool. Nice. Matt Bowlesby, Matt Bowlesby is, which is funny. Bob Bowlesby's in the documentary, <laughs> and I'm like texting Matt while I'm watching. I was like, "This is a life is strange." Um, but yeah, Matt's Matt's all over it. So we got that one. We got other matches we're working on. So. Ben, how, where, where's your hip at right now? If we can get you a match feel, against I, one of these Paul I guys, feel great. No, I can wrestle Mark Bader. I could do that. If you guys want to throw me in there against Mark Bader, I mean, uh, but no, if you no lose, you're gonna say it's the hip, though, right? Face. I won't lose to you. Have you seen? Dude, he's jacked. Bader's been training. <laughs> yeah, but I got like 50 pounds on you. <laughs> I got a gas tank like no other, brother. Bader weighs 185 uh, pounds now. You just can't you tell. Can't, you, you can't I use got... your gas tank if you get pinned in a minute. A minute? Not a chance. You couldn't pin me in a minute. <laughs> Put it on the clock, Christian. I'll, I'll yeah. face out with Bader. <sighs> Bring it. Bring it. That um, would be, you know what would be, be a cool like uh, interstitial throughout the show if like Ben wrestled every every flow staffer <laughs> and we just see who could last the longest not getting pinned. Oh uh, well, it's definitely be someone like Mike Mal who's like big, you know, like Bader. He Bader can wrestle, but he's only 150 pounds. Yeah, 155 with the Christmas to... Christmas, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's got his his, his own version of a Christmas wreath going on. Yes. Now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So just some ideas. Hey, so, so yeah. Uh, hold on, I got a question for you. Maybe uh so we're already at seven matches. So you are you guys are gonna make this like a, a way longer thing? Cause I know for a while you guys were skewing towards the like five, six, seven matches. Well, I, I'd say there. this, right? The eight man one fifty tournament was like ten matches with the two women's in the third place, yeah, I think. Four, two, one, ten, yeah. And I thought it was awesome. Right, I mean, yeah. we didn't have a ton of, th you know, we're adjusting these as we go. We want a lot of time in between. Do we want yeah. a little, let it go, 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 go? And we had one wait time issue from the semis to the finals. Um, yeah. 
issue, whatever you want to call it, yeah. the circumstance we had to deal with. So, but I thought it ran smooth, and what was it, less than an yeah. hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, it wasn't so, bad. So, you know, think about it. You do a college, 10 matches of folk styles, about two hours. Mm -hmm. You're going to be less than that, or, you know, 10, 10 freestyle matches. Yeah, I think 10 or 11 is what we're, what we're looking for Ooh. right now. I like it. Nice. So we're, we're at, at eight, eight then with that match. Yes. Heck yeah. Love it. Nice. Maybe we get another couple locked in the next couple days. So good stuff. A lot to look forward to. Tons of wrestling live on flow this weekend. Um, so keep your eye out for that. Watch the Gable doc. And listen, the second the Big Ten schedule is out, we're going to get it up. We're going to start doing a bunch of content around it. We can't wait. But we have to wait at the same time because nothing we can do about Patience it. Unless we infiltrate the Big Ten offices, which... You know what? If we get to next week, we will put a plan into to. we'll put a plan into action. If by next Monday we don't have the Big Ten schedule, we'll we will infiltrate. We will send troops on the ground. Thanks to Mark Bader for coming on. Watch the Bader show very soon. Thanks to Bracky. Thanks to Ben. And thanks especially to you for listening. There's no show without you. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Happy New Year. See you Tuesday. 2021 is gonna rock. Yeah, baby. <laughs>